Welcome to a new crochet podcast with me, your host, Nikki. I am so excited for you to be here. You get to know the designers from a totally different perspective. And today we have a brand new guest. But before I tell you who it is, remember to subscribe to my channel as well as her channel and of course, all our newsletters. So let me introduce you to Jillian from Spinning Yarn Crochet. I am so excited for you to be here. How are you doing? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I absolutely adore your patterns. They're phenomenal, but we're going to talk about those in a second. First, tell us, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, how did you even get started with crochet? Like what triggered you to start this beautiful craft? Well, um, so back in, I started crocheting back in 2013, 2014. And at the time I was in school, I was in law school actually, and it was a very stressful time as you can imagine. Um, so I really felt like I needed, I needed a hobby. I needed to, something to relax, something to take my mind off, off school and studying and yeah. everything else. And so I decided to pick up a crochet hook and I have not put it down since. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I, like, I didn't even know. I mean, I try to do my research uh, about all the designs as much as possible, but that part I didn't know. So did you actually <laughs> finish law school? Are you a lawyer? Like, I what? am. I did finish law school. I graduated in 2014, like later, you know, a year later or so. Um, and I am practicing as a lawyer now, yes. Wow. So you're doing actually spinning yarn and crochet as a side thing, as a side hustle. Yep. Wow, yep. that is so cool. So are you thinking about doing that at some point full time? Or do you really do you love being a lawyer? Well, I do love being a lawyer. Um, and, you know, I never really envisioned myself doing crochet full time. But you never know who knows <laughs> what might happen in the future. But for right now, I'm planning to still practice, uh, practice law and um, continue with spinning yarn crochet on the side. I love it. And uh, but something must have triggered you to say, you know what, I'm going to start the side hustle. I'm not just doing this for myself. What triggered you to say, I'm turning this into a business? Oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, I, I had been crocheting for probably three or four years before I kind of thought about making my own patterns. And it was really just, um, a, a, an expansion of me exploring crochet. So, you know, I had been following patterns for several years and yeah. just kind of got an interest to, you know, see what I could make on my own. And so I started making my own patterns and then I was like, well, wait, I may as well share these. So <laughs> then I started the blog and I started sharing them and, uh, and you know, the rest is history. So the, the that started around 2017. So yeah. the blog is almost or over five years old now. Wow, yeah. that's so cool. But how did yeah. you come up with the name Spin a Yarn Crochet? I mean, that's such a unique name. Oh, thank you. So I when I was thinking about sharing my patterns, um, you know, I, I knew I needed some sort of name. Um, and I'm from Newfoundland, Canada, Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada. Um, and so we have a lot of sayings, a lot of, you know, unique things. And I know it's not exclusive to Newfoundland, but it's very common to hear people talk about spinning a yarn, telling a story by, oh, you know, cool. spinning a yarn, that sort of thing. So it was yeah. a little bit of a cultural, yeah. um, throwback to home and, um, just, you know, something close to my heart, that sort of thing. I love it. That's perfect. It's beautiful. I love that it has a little bit of a backstory. It's not just the yarn itself, but it comes with a backstory, which brings yeah. you back into the warmth of why you do what you do, right? And I love that. Yep. Yeah, where I came from, where I call home. So how did you, dis I mean, you're mostly emigurumi. This Is that where you start and say, I want stuffed animals or did your kids ask for it? Sorry, I don't even know. Do you have kids? I'm sorry. I'm just throwing out. No, and I don't have kids. <laughs> I so just, that, I just... that makes it even more curious, you know, yeah. like how did you start with emigurumi? Was that your own thing or did someone yeah, I just I just loved it. I just love it. I don't know why I'm so drawn to emigurumi. I just am. And it's always been my favorite thing to make. I've made lots of other things you know yeah. I've made sweaters and I've made you know scarves and pillows and yeah anything you can imagine but I just love amigurumi I don't know oh why I can't explain it I love it but do you do you keep them for yourself or do you sell them in the end like the physical ones the originals <laughs> yeah no I I have almost all of my originals I haven't sold any um or pr like barely any maybe one or two um some of them I have given away to my nieces and nephew yeah um 
you know, for birthday, you know, I'll make them things for birthdays and things like that, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. Yeah. But for the most part, I have almost every single original I've ever made. <laughs> you must have a whole room full then. I mean, they're gorgeous and they're some of them are bigger. So it's not like they're teeny tiny, you know? <laughs> yeah, some of them are quite big. I definitely have started to, uh, I've had to start putting them in crates and storing them <laughs> like in the storage room because yeah. my my little studio does not... Uh, it's it's bursting at the seams yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love that but one of the things that you're you know very well known for is the fl i call them the flat a maker me i don't even know mm -hmm. what the actual name of it is but it's it's not very rounded if you have a specific edge around it which looks like a slip stitch i assume it's a slip stitch but like how did you come up with that idea of saying you know what i'm not going to make them super 3d i'm going to make them smush together and they're just so cute though like how did you come up with that idea um, you know, I, I don't know. I can't really pinpoint exactly where I got the idea. I do know that it started with my unicorn amigurumi. Um, and I, I can't remember where the inspiration came from, but for some reason I, I was inspired to make that amigurumi and make it in flat panels. Yeah. And, um, I called it, um, like the title of the pattern on my blog is called ragdoll unicorn. Yeah. And I called it that because, you know, the, the way that the panels were, it's all separate pieces. You seam them yeah. together, you um, sew all the pieces together, almost like a rag doll. And yeah. it's kind of has a floppy quality, like a 2D yeah. quality. And so that's what I called it. And, and, and I really liked that style. And so I kept um, designing things in that style and I would call them rag doll, you know, rag doll bunny, rag yeah. doll, whatever. And it kind of caught on a little bit. So um, a lot of people actually just refer that to that style now as ragdoll style uh, amigurumi, which is kind of cool. I don't know if it existed prior to like that term, if that term yeah. existed prior to that pattern. But um, I hear a lot of people referring to that now online, uh, particularly, you know, because I'm, I still make them in that style because yeah. I love it. Um, so yeah, it just kind of grew from there. Well, I'm going to call them that way too now. Beforehand, I called them flat amigurumi because I didn't know what they were called. But I love yeah. it. And they're specifically to you. Like if someone sees them, usually they think immediately of you, which is great. It means you made your name known for this kind of style, which I absolutely love. Uh, but how do you come up with these ideas? Like, I mean it's not just amigurumi, right? So you have to think a little bit more outside of the box to make it in a flat version, right? Like, how do you come up with your ideas? Um, so, you know, I find inspiration from everywhere, um, just the same as other other designers find inspiration in, you know, what's trending, what's what people are loving right now, what's, you know, in the fashion world, what's popular yeah. in toys, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's always really fun to try to translate that to like the flat style and, yeah. and try to figure out how to get that shape. How do you get that curve when you're working yeah. in a flat panel? How do you, yes. you know, get, make certain shapes and that sort of thing. So that's always, I find a really fun challenge with this style of uh, amigurumi. And it's one of my favorite parts, honestly. I love it. Do you have some tips for those who love crocheting these types of crochet uh, imigurumi patterns? Is there something you feel like, uh, this is the question I get all the time. Let me give you a tip on how to do this better. Mm -hmm. Well, th the great thing is that these patterns are great for beginners. You know, I know sometimes beginners find it difficult to work in the round or they're not quite sure about that yet. Um, so this is a great style to start with for anyone that's interested in, in starting amigurumi and haven't tried it before yeah. um, because it's just worked in flat rows. Um, and, you know, I think it's um, it's just a matter of practice makes perfect, I think, you know, or not perfect, but the more you do it, the better you get. Right. Yes. So um, it's just a matter of consistency. And um, in with the flat style in particular, you're joining the panels um, in crocheting around the panels to join them. And so sometimes people get frustrated at that because it might not be perfectly even or, you know, that sort of thing starting out. Um, so I always give the tip to just, um, you know, to crochet loosely, the, the, yeah. the more loose your stitches are or the looser your stitches are, the smoother it will look yeah. when you're crocheting around the outside. So that's, I think, probably the biggest tip for that style. 
I love that. That's beautiful. And they're so, so adorable. Like, even the faces are cute. They're like, they want, I mean, I have the desire to even make one. And I haven't really <laughs> done a lot of imigurumi, but they're really, really cute. And I feel like this is something that, you know, it feels like it's natural in your hand to just play around with them like that. I, it's just what I think. You know, yeah. I, I remember seeing the uh, dinosaurs, you know, and it just, you can just play with them. Like, it's it's so adorable. I love them. So, oh, but, thank you so much. Yeah. But you do also do other imigurumi imigurumi like I've seen full fur uh, imigurumi and they're so detailed like I mean just with faux fur on its own it's a challenge <laughs> you know I mean but you make it even cute like how like what's your thought process I mean you must be there must be some challenges in there that like reveal them for us please <laughs> uh the the fur yarn is always tricky to work with I know it can be extremely frustrating my biggest tip is stitch markers just oh. just like all the stitch markers put them in every <laughs> stitch if you have to <laughs> um but definitely at the beginning and end of each row and yeah. um and it's more about again like the more you do it the easier it gets you kind of feel for the stitches yeah. um but i always i love working with furry yarn i think it's really fun and uh there's so many possibilities with it so i never oh, yeah. discount furry yarn as frustrating as it can be <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But do you see yourself going outside of the immigrant world a little bit? Do you t dabble there once in a while? Or do you really feel like, you know what, immigrant is my thing. I don't want to do anything else. I mean, I love following other people's patterns for other things. Like I love making, you know, when I need a break, if I want to make a blanket or yeah. a sweater or something like that, I love doing that and finding designers and, and exploring new patterns from other designers that I love. Yeah. Um, so I will always do that. But in terms of designing, I, I'm definitely going to stick with Amigurumi because that's my passion. That's what yeah. I love. Um, and that's what I feel I'm best at. And I'm going to leave the designing of like, you know, blankets and um, clothes and garments <laughs> and that to the experts because that's not me. <laughs> Well, in that case, you don't even have to worry about sizing or anything like that, right? You just That's right, that. exactly. <laughs> Although you could dabble into, you know, dolls or something like that, and then you have clothes for those, right? Technically, you could. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually working on some dolls right now, so... We'll Perfect. see how they turn out. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> but I'm also thinking, uh, coming back to the rag dolls, um, for, for, I have a crafter's mind. So for me, I like to repurpose things or think outside of the box a little bit. And the first thing I thought about when I saw the rag dolls is you could turn them into purses, right? I mean, oh, 100%. you know, things like that. Like you could make it where it just seemed at a certain point and then you add a strap to it. And then let's say you have a dinosaur bag, right? Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, that's Cute, right so there are that... yeah there are so many possibilities like the, <laughs> that's a great example i have some where i've left you know they have little patches on their belly and you leave it open so it's a little secret pocket oh. some people make them and use them as like um pillows on the bed because like they are a little bit flatter so yeah. like they make great throw pillows yes some people use them in um reeds like yeah. on their door yeah. um i've seen people use them as like wall hangings because again they're they're they don't take up a lot of space they're great to put in like a shadow box or on the wall as a yeah. wall hanging i've seen people use just the front panel of some of the patterns as an applique instead of oh, stuffing yeah. it to make it an amigurumi so every people are so creative when it comes to these style um you know i've seen so many fun ideas um and i'm sure there's you know lots more that i'm not even mentioning <laughs> that's true uh how long does it take you typically uh to crochet a pattern like do you are you ahead like of your own publishing schedule or do you just go with the flow whenever something comes up are you publish considering it's a side hustle i mean you must be a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. on that yeah, I, I'm not a big planner. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of gal. <laughs> so I, you know, if I'm in the mood to design something or I have an idea and I want to design it, um, you know, I'll sit down and just design it and I'll go through the whole design, crochet, and then of course the, you know, the computer side of things and, you know, basically go through the whole process and publish it. And then I might move, you know, move on to the next project after that. So it's really just like one at a time, whatever strikes me um, as, you know, something I'm interested in or an idea I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's not a lot of pre-planning. 
<laughs> Does it take you some time to finish one? And I'm not saying the pattern writing itself, but the actual designing process. Does it take like a few days, a few weeks? Do you really take your time until it's perfect? Because yours are so detailed. And some of them are extremely detailed where I'm like, wow. I mean, she must have taken her time to get to that point. Like, what's your average process on this? So, yeah, I mean, I, I generally always start out with a sketch. And so I, I, I work on the sketch quite um, a lot. And so I don't, I don't move on from the sketch until I'm satisfied with how, you know, the shapes look and, you know, everything else. And then I actually, based on the sketch, I write up the pattern before mm -hmm. I even start crocheting. I write the pattern up and then I start crocheting. Um, and then I'll adjust the pattern as I go to, depending on how, you know, how it's turning out. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, I usually have another panel to create because, you know, with this style, you have to make two of, yeah. you know, everything almost. <laughs> um, and so I'll always be able to work through my pattern a second time to That's see true. if there's any mistakes or, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it uh, it's a good system, actually, because I you like get it. to you get to do things twice for every pattern so that's true that's true i really like that idea actually so you can really check your work you know te technically you don't even need a tester at this point right because you're really checking your own work and see everything that's really cool but you just yeah. said something that blew my mind what you are writing your patterns before you even start like what yeah. <laughs> like i mean <laughs> i can do that for some patterns you know like bags and uh, uh scarves and maybe a hat because i've done so many of them but like what <laughs> Like it just blows my mind yeah. right now. The same way Gurumi. <laughs> like really? <laughs> I mean, it's if it's if it's like a regular amigurumi in the round, I don't do that because I find that I do need to I do need to yeah. make it to really make sure that the shape is turning out the way that I want when you're working in the yeah. round. But for some reason, I'm just more comfortable with the flat style, and yeah. I I'm able to translate like an image in my mind yeah. or my sketch into a pattern much more easily and so i'm i do that and i and then i work it up so mm -hmm. yeah that is so <laughs> cool but um now i'm curious about your let's call it your me life uh, what do you do on your like me time you know outside of crochet outside of work what do you do to relax and do something else something that your audience may not know about you um, well, my husband and I love to cycle. So we cycle a lot. Um, and we're, you know, pretty outdoorsy. So we go on hikes. Uh, we have a dog, a doodle, our named Archie. Um, so we take him with us wherever we go. Sometimes, you know, just on weekend trips, um, spend a lot of time with my family. Of course, I have nieces and, nep and a nephew that I love to spend time with. So um, yeah, just, you know, outdoorsy things. I mean, I crochet a lot. So I yeah. crochet for fun, too. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that a lot always. I love that. Now, when it comes to crocheting, what type of yarn do you feel like you tend to go to the most? Like, is there a specific type of yarn you feel like you use all time because it's either the perfect color, the perfect texture? What is it that you really aim to go for all the time? Um, honestly, I'm really open to trying different yarns. There's not any particular one that I gravitate towards. Um, it uh, Oftentimes my patterns are really dictated by colors more so <laughs> than type of yarn because I, you know, I'm a firmer believer that you can, you can make any amigurumi with yep. any type of yarn, in my yep. opinion. It's just going to look a little bit different or it might be a different Very size true. or a different, you know, texture. So, I mean, I love working with cotton yarn uh, for certain projects. I do use acrylic most often. Um, most of the time I'm working with worsted weight yarn. Um, so it's re honestly, sometimes the deciding factor is just comes down to the color. You know, if I like a certain color and a certain brand and, you know, I'll yeah. use that. I mix and match yarns all the time. I'm not, you know, devoted to any particular um, brand or, you know, even in the same pattern, I might mix yarns just to get the right look, to get the right yes. um, effect. Yeah. I have done the same too. Uh, there's a, only a few times where I really like, you know what, I have to just mix it together. It's the perfect boldness of certain colors and it just sometimes just fits together perfectly. So yep, I get exactly. it. <laughs> so where can uh, your audience get your patterns? Is it just your website? Because certain designers have it just on their website, but I assume you're also on Ravelry, Etsy. Where can they get your patterns from? Yes, so I uh, so all my patterns are available for free online on my blog that you can visit at uh, spinnyyarncrochet.com. Absolutely. And also, I know a lot of people prefer to have 
uh, a version that they can download and print or you know save on their computer to refer back to so i also offer um, pdfs in my etsy shop in ravelry and i also just started using riddler so um i have a few patterns on riddler still adding adding my collection as time goes Perfect. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you were here, Julian. I am so, so glad. And it was such a pleasure to talk to you. Your patterns are incredible. So if anyone wants to grab any of them, check them out. I'll leave a link down below so you can uh, take a look. Thank you for being here. That was such a nice uh, a pleasure for you to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nikki. It was great. Bye, everyone.